E W S. The Overnight Underground News Podcast. Here's today's headlines. Trump gets his wall. Apple Store looters get a surprise. Who's we, sucker? Rioters in L.A. target bagels. Oi! Are you ready for the Kami Radio Network? No. And stormtroopers police social distancing. These stories and more on today's Overnight Underground News. I'm John Ford. It seems Trump may finally have gotten his wall after all. Video of the White House today shows a large perimeter fence has been installed around the entire presidential crib. The Secret Service says they're just reinforcing security around the White House and have told Fox News it's just an expansion of the perimeter. Look, no matter how high they make the damn thing, a mesh fence just can't keep us safe from Trump. Maybe, maybe not. But with any luck, it might be enough to keep him locked in his cell, a bunker, until November 4th. Maybe de Blasio and Cuomo could join him in there for jello wrestling or something and keep these three retards busy until after the elections. Looters who grabbed computers from the Apple Store are in for a bit of a surprise. It seems that the computers and iDevices snatched by Looty are just bricked junk. TMZ reports devices swiped from the Apple Store are just demo machines, and they've been rooted with applications that prevent the devices from being reset to factory settings. They're just essentially useless, overpriced electronic paperweights. I mean, after all, they are Apple products. To make matters even worse for Ludi, the devices are also being tracked. Maybe get some t-shirts made up that say, I looted the Apple Store today and all I got was a $1,000 paperweight. Rolex, the watch company, is probably thinking too bad they can't break their watches. The New York Post reports that looters swiped, get this, just under two and a half million dollars worth of watches just from one Rolex store in the Soho neighborhood of Manhattan. The store on Green Street was, needless to say, emptied by the looters. Two and a half million. That's what? Two Rolex watches? I know. Let's blame all this nonsense on the Jews. Not a good idea. The Jerusalem Post reports that rioters hit synagogues and kosher stores up and down the historically Jewish Fairfax district in Los Angeles. The rabbi Gershon Beth Shul was tagged along with the congregation Beth Israel, which was graffitied with anti-Semitic slogans like the the old standby used by anti-Semites worldwide, fuck Israel and free Palestine. A number of kosher delis and stores were also looted. Looters got a nosh, too. Right, I'm a bigot, I know, but for the left. Well, here's some good news. No. Foreign companies can now own American broadcast properties. Yesterday, according to Radio Inc. magazine, the FCC voted to allow foreign investment in Cumulus Broadcasting. Up to 100%. Cumulus is the third largest owner and operator of radio stations in the U.S. Sounds like a great idea. Allowing ownership of U.S. broadcast properties by foreign entities such as Russia and China. And hell, why not North Korea and Iran? Bet they'd still play shitty American pop music, though. I just love this story. At Disney parks, Imperial Stormtroopers will be in charge of social distancing. Following the reopening of parts of Disney World on May 20th, Citizen, if you're visiting the park, you must follow social distancing rules. In a video released by Attractions Magazine, two stormtroopers can be seen at Disney Springs, blasters in hand, ordering visitors at the happiest place on Earth to stay the hell away from each other. (laughs) Of course, that video can be viewed on today's podcast page at OvernightUnderground.com. Making the list of things that want to kill you today are mutant ticks. What is journalism coming to? Over in Russia, in the Krasnoyarv... Krasnoyarvsnikov region. I have no idea. Who would know? Besides a Russian, who would know how to pronounce this? Krasnoyarvsnikov. Anyways, they've been blighted, or is it bited, by an invading horde of blood-sucking ticks. The Daily Star reports the new and deadly mutant ticks are spreading across the region at a rate 428 times more than the usual tick infestation rate. I didn't even know they had such a thing. 
as a normal tick infestation rate. And I don't know about you, but I'm staying home and locking all my doors. Meanwhile, in the suburbs of Grosnevoishnik City, they are infested with 214 ticks per square kilometer. The normal safe figure is 0.5. Oh yes, it's too late. We learned that communism does not pay. So, don't have a snappy Soviet comeback for that one, do we? N E W S. A mostly correct and occasionally incomplete transcript and links to reference sources and articles of this Overnight Underground can be found at OvernightUnderground.com.